ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਅਨਦਰ ਐਪੀਸੋਡ ਆਫ ਸੀਈਓ ਟੋਕਸ ਆਮ ਯਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟਰ ਹਮਰਾਜ ਐਕੇ ਫਲੈਕਸਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਜੋਇਨਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਟੂਡੇ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਗੈਸਟ ਨਾਟ ਜਸਟ ਅ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਗੈਸਟ ਬਟ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਅਰ ਫੇਸ ਇਨ ਅ ਸੀਕ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਜੋਇਨਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਸੁਖੀ ਵਾਹੀ ਵਾਲਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਇਸ ਆਨਰ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਇਨ ਅ ਸ਼ੋ ਹਾਊ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਫੀਲਿੰਗ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਦ ਆਨਰ ਇਸ ਮਾਈਨ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਈਵਨ ਥੋਟ ਆਫ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਵੇ that's absolutely amazing how's your day been what you've been up to so far usual stuff this morning gone out at a site of a couple of uh, projects and then back here now to meet you guys yeah. excellent excellent so we know of course the community know that you work a lot of work behind the scenes and uh, some some people might know you as an award winning business mentor but others might know you as an amritari sikh who's also a multimillionaire as well now what we want to know is being a respected member in the sikh community where did the whole journey start wow So if we're talking about on the level first of all Hamraz I'm that's such a beautiful question um the journey goes right back obviously from when I was born but uh, I've been born into a Gursik family and so did you any many our living our life has always been very much into Sikh orientation um so I've not really understood any other way so for me it was just normal life living um my father and his singh wahiwala who was very much in the vein of explaining Sikhi to us at a very young age had you know every weekend we'd be sitting together at uh, in our guru in our guru maharaj dinar so they babe the kamre the which we sit there and have a our, our congregation together as an immediate family mm-hmm. my mum my uh, late mother who just passed away late last year gurmeet kaur wahiwala i would say has been a, a tremendous influence in my life in mm-hmm. grounding and keeping me into this in a, a level of a bit of humility in life mm-hmm. i suppose um but the journey within sikhism is intrinsic in myself it's been i didn't, didn't actually understand it was the same or different to anything so i was lived that way so the business journey i suppose you could say started when i was 8 years old all the way through i've i've only understood business with seven generations in that vein um my father grandfather great grandfather and it goes right far back so that's principally our journey that's absolutely amazing i mean i've met i had the chance to meet some of your children as well and it's beautiful to see that they all attend bus camps attend sikh societies at universities that's right so regularly yes regularly right. as well so that's you know it's quite inspiring as well so i mean i've been doing a bit of research and uh, i found out that online that you've become a millionaire at the age of 21 and with more just good but you also become a multimillionaire at the age of about 24 25 as well so what we want to know is um as a you know as being a young young students watching this or any youngsters or aspiring entrepreneurs how did you actually get to that stage wow well i have to um 100% i have to acknowledge the fact that guru and wahi guru within ourselves and also my parents so that's really what it's about my siblings so i'm the youngest of eight children so okay. we we've all sort of kind of stuck out together and i've only seen this excellence within everybody else so we've all grown up together um out of eight children there's two two brothers myself and my brother elder brother man monting mahiwala who had a very strong impact in my life in the sense of keeping me um aspiring you know keeping me wanting to to progress and want to see something new whether it's in cars or audio or whatever it was um and then on the same token all my sisters have been just tremendous because they're actually all entrepreneurs as well um so the the how it started or what actually impacted me would be just to, just because obviously if the people are listening and it's for the young generation I spend an awful lot of my time these days trying to assist the next generation as well so we'll probably talk about that a bit later mm-hmm. um but it started with a, a a lovely shop on the corner of Cromwell Road okay. Cromwell Road here in Peterborough and uh, that's not to be mixed up with Cromwell Street for the uh, people who are old enough and you'll recognize <laughs> what I'm talking about but uh, it was actually a shop that I took over with uh, it was a hardware store and what we did is we turned this hardware store into kind of like a central hub it was already the hub of the Sikh community but also the Pakistani community and then also the Hindu community as well and before that it was the Afro Caribbean community Italian community everyone just hung out together we all looked after each other the Polish community as well Um so my father was very very influential in this particular arena in the area of Peter which is East Anglia and uh, he's been a sevak across the globe you know with with Sikhi understanding Gurdwara Sahib setting him up even the Peter Gurdwara Sahib was originally uh Maharaj the Kid Padina not this is not mera this is basically mera mujh mein kuch nahi jo kuch hai so tera sorry kitch uh, for the adjustments there um 
And so father, my, my father actually donated the very first Gurdwara Sahib building here in Peterborough as well in 1973. So they've always been in the vein of Sikhi is a part of us. So I started with that build, with the business in about, when I was about 16 years old. I was still studying to be, wanted to become an architect at the time because I was forever surrounded by my father with, with these maps and plans and constant adjustment because he's a developer as well. And so what we did basically is we continued to work in the same vein and I used to see his stuff and so at 16 I was, I was very clear what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a, an entrepreneur but I wanted specifically to be a, an architect. And my mum said to me at the time, she said, but that I'm sure there's a way that you can work out. This is all yours anyway, yours and your brothers and your, your children, brother, your siblings. Um, because dad had built up a multiple group of companies. Uh, probably one of the first within the community is very, very well established in property since 1967, etc. And so I said, I want to be an architect. He, she said, I'm sure you can work a way out of becoming an architect and running one of the shops as well. And so I did, you know, basically went to college instead of uh, staying on at school and I ran that particular houseware store uh, in an earlier year. That gives you an indication to kind of, kind of where I was going. Um, we turned that business around um, and from that business we spawned a further two companies. Um, one was an audio company, one was a pots and pans uh, wholesale as well and, and a, m a number of others as well did come through over the years so it was it was for me that was the seat of my you could say seat of the soul you could say seat of my business career in, in the way I learned but I've always been stacking shelves I've worked hard okay. you know I've, I've done the five o'clock in the morning three o'clock at night finishes and um, you know five years or seven days all those things you mustn't think that there is an easy route and if there is an easy route there's an easy way down as well so you know you've got to have that hard graft ethic and resilience within oneself and that's definitely I mean, the road to success is not the easiest route, as you mentioned. I mean, it won't be just a straight line. There will be ups and downs, bumps going over mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And talking about, you know, the road to success, on your road, on your journey, did you face any hardships, any difficulties during your journey? And if so, how did you overcome these? Well, that's a really deep question. Um, thank you, Hamraj, once again. The reality of life is that there is... Uh, if I may just quote a bit of Guru as well, again, Dukkha Dharu, Sukha Rogbya. So without our Dukkha, we don't actually even acknowledge the Sukha. So should I say Sukha, if we stayed in a role of Sukha without any contention in our life, um, without any pressure, how would we unleash the diamond within? How would that happen? Will we be in a constant state of trying to find problems in, in the good that we have? You know, regularly we talk about Western challenges compared to Eastern challenges, mm. like um, we don't have, uh, you know, oh my God, I don't have Wi-Fi, and, and that's, a, that's a seriously a Western thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the contention is real, the context is Western. Does that make sense? The fact that we have become reliant on the on, on the internet is is real. So, but the fact that it's over here and it's it's not, we're not worried about our water in the morning and our food during the day, mm -hmm. but we work, we're, we're, you know, we're looking at the luxuries of life. Mm -hmm. Contention is still there at every level. So in my opinion, there is no refinement of yourself, of your soul, of your unlocking, unless you have, have some contention in life. So on that purpose, I'm on that way. You know, on the way, we've always had to grow. Um, so one would be to raise finance, capital, sales, whatever it is. I mean, it's not always been a plain sailing uh, business and that's, that's life. But that's a part of the ebbs and flows that keep you alive, mm -hmm. awake, the variety of life. And I go back to the original conversation that I was sharing a moment ago about the inner resilience. Yes. That resilience is the key element. That's mm -hmm. why I see it. Wow. And that, of course, helped you drive through all the way from a young age to where we are right now. And what we want to know, of course, you are a respected, men you are a respected member in the Sikh community. But there must be a reason why, there, why you, you know, are you a respected member. So what we want to know is, what are your current projects? Oh, good question. Okay, so today I have a, a variety of businesses. So we work within um, the normal development, property, landlording, that kind of stuff, which is very key. But what's really close to my heart is I spend a lot of time in, in molding and assisting other children, teenagers, people who've just left university. So people who want to uh, further themselves in business, maybe people who've come from a professional background who want to then jump into a business background. Just last week, um, uh, 
a, a two brothers joined our, our, our group of um, mentoring, a circle of mentoring, and basically it's on the basis that he's, they've tried online retail a number of times. They're both very solid professionals, mm -hmm. and they've had this gut feeling, and should I say the, the, the resilience and the belief in themselves to try and become entrepreneurs as well. Um, and so they've, they've done their best, they've, they've tried their best, and you know, they've, they've got stuck with some stock, and they've not really found the right route. Mm -hmm. And what the question was, which is exactly why I stand in the marketplace today, mm -hmm. is that I was lucky, I had both my parents, if I had a challenge, or if I didn't know how to do something, I would just ask them, or I'd ask my community, my team, which is my family, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had the answer on tap. So what, how can we, how could we create that same instant support for the next generation, for people who haven't had a business background. Mm -hmm. And so that was my mission and that was, the, that was the hypotheses that we were trying to resolve. So we've created a platform uh, called the Inspired Group and what we do within there is uh, we're involved with, this, there's a, an organization which is the, uh, our charitable arm and our, our seva to the Sangat and the world uh, as a whole and it's called Sikh entrepreneur.com so you can get hold of me through there as well Sikh Entrepreneur is a global platform we're also involved very very strongly with Sikh role model .com, which is based in Pune in India as well I'm one of the board there as well and uh, today we also have an online university we call the inspired university.com where you can go and you can you can take some uh, courses which show you business strategy and structure but also the inner psychology resilience um, and furtherment of oneself so all of these are a part of within a mentoring circle that I deliver. So I deliver private trainings to uh, CEOs and uh, people of similar sort of caliber, also individuals who, have, who are just trying and starting off in the business journey. Okay. So it's, it's a, a very rewarding journey for myself. So we have a series of trainings that I deliver. Um, education is one this weekend, and I think um, uh, hopefully somebody will be there as well. When I talk about procrastination, um, so I, I basically I work with the unlocking of the brain. What in Sikhi it's core to have the intention clear and yes. pure, and then and only then we can start to create some uh, change in our life. Um, so we have programs. I have a mentoring circle, and I help personal people individually. Like I said, they've just come on board, two brothers, and now we've already put a strategy in place for them to sell online properly. Um, with the support so it's about being available for people when they need them through yes. a program and of course online is the best way to access um, as many people as possible I mean everyone's got Wi-Fi these days if not people can just you know get data somehow or even get a hotspot so that's the probably the best way forward as well which is absolutely amazing and talking about your mentoring schemes I mean I found out just not too long ago that you've been supporting the Sikh organizations as well yes, in yes, leadership sir. could you tell us a bit more about that please you know, Maharaj, the, Maharaj has been very, very good to us um, in every way. So I think part of our Daswan, Daswan's not just about getting the, the money element of your life, you know, yes. donating money over to somebody else to make change. Maharaj says, do it by your own hand. Yes. So Daswan is by your own hut. So what we try to do, what my family's philosophy is, and in specific my philosophy, which I've, which I've evolved a little bit further, is, is to assist people with the ignition inner ignition. So I talk very deeply about inner psychometrics, so people really truly understand themselves mm -hmm. uh, through whether they're a dominant character, whether they're an influential character, whether they're a stability character who likes to keep things orderly, mm -hmm. or, or whether they're a, a compliant character which likes things to be in order and structure and, mm -hmm. and pressings. So we've, we've created a, uh, a series of programs that really inspire and ignite individuals' self-belief, self-confidence, mm -hmm. and align it with the Sikhi for the people who are in the Sikh vein and the people who are not uh, Sikhs, we just attach them to something, mm -hmm. uh, a greater strength outside of themselves. So they can actually really realize that it, the person who's going to create the changes of themselves within themselves mm -hmm. and that we go up forward. I hope that helps a little bit in the conversation. And with the Sikh, with the Sikh groups like um, we've had the Opar Kirpa that we have actually been able to share through my daughter who is called Hajot Gaur Wahiwala, who is the uh, president of the Aston um, so she was the vice president, yes, sorry, of the Aston Sikh Society for Students, um, and also involved with BOSS and through many other um, amazing, amazing sevadar that they we we started to train in self leadership and the ignition of self leadership and how to ignite other people's worlds uh, through to all of that senior team every single year, all the sevak that come forward from the BOSS societies and stuff. So yes, this is something there. But I find myself uh, truly humbled and very, very. I feel very honoured uh, to be at least have something that Maharaj has shared with ourselves in our bidi 
to pass on into the next generation. So we, I, I really do it with whole heart, um, and I try to evolve. If anyone's got a question, I really answer it. So even when we're working online with people, we actually do, I do one-to-one -one trainings as well, and physical trainings as well. So. Wow, that's amazing. And talking about BOSS, the British organisation of Sikh students, I mean, personally, I've had a chance to actually meet the senior team as well and actually be a part of the leadership scheme. So, of course, the team that you've helped train, they trained the youth. So I've got to say it was an you know, incredible experience. And, uh, you know, just big respects to the whole of the British organisation team watching right now. And if you do want to get involved and support the team, you can always contact BOSS on social media as well. And you also can contact Baji as well on all these contacts, social media and online as well. I mean, online is the way forward, isn't it? It's the best way to cook. It is. I mean, it, uh, online has leveled the playing field for business mm -hmm. and it's allowed a generation to access um, real-time, you could say, business acumen. Mm -hmm. So they can actually, you can learn via online, but more importantly, you can actually earn via online. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's retail, Amazon, eBay, etc., you know, the, the, the world really has become a smaller place. Uh, in my day when we used to have to import, we'd have to travel, I'm not joking, thousands of miles across to the Eastern Hemisphere to buy stock in. Um, but as a whole, now you just go onto line and go onto Alibaba or find a re relevant uh, product. I will say one thing, um, that the future is in the search to know where to find the product, whatever product you're trying to source, where to actually find that product. If you can allocate a bit of concentration power to things like searching for the right people, okay. searching for the right product. If you're going to sell the crockery, you need to find the exact place to, be, to find the best place. My father always says, um, when I had the humble pleasure of interviewing him as well in the local radio here in Peterborough, um, he said that uh, always try to go back to source, go back to the person who's actually manufactured it and got, get first hand, and then try to cut out all the middlemen for the margin. Um, so, so these are just things that we've learned. That's a top tip right there, ladies and gentlemen. Free top tip advice from Suki Wahiwala himself. Quite out the middle man, get straight to the source. That's absolutely amazing. Now, of course, there's no hiding the fact that you are a very hard-working Amitari Sikh living in the UK. And what we want to know is, of course, during your journey towards success, was no sunshine and rainbows. Now, you've, you've established yourself as an Amitari Sikh. What we want to know is what are your future aspirations, your future goals, where are you looking to head towards? Wow. So I think if I can talk about it a bit more in short term, we are actually on a beautiful journey. And I think when Amrit is a hukum, um, if we're blessed and we're selected by Maharaj to have that inner ignition, then so be it. If not, then we should all still endeavor to be the best human we can possibly be. It's not just about being I'm really very sick over somebody else and we don't have our, our um, you could say, hierarchy within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think in my version of me being an Amrita Shakya individual or a Sikh, it's for actually me to lower myself at the bottom of the tree instead of at the top of the tree. So our visualization, the moment you start Shakya Amrita, you automatically become the base, the Tur in front of the people. Mm -hmm. So you can actually work with the community in, the, in an honest way. So I think our future is um, to have even more people go through our trainings and education so we can actually create a, a beautiful uh, long-term growth within the community to, to inspire true entrepreneurship, successful entrepreneurship, but with a sharing element of the swan within that to share, not necessarily just the money, to share the logic with the next generation. So a legacy product that I'm willing to or wishing to try to create, hopefully Maharaj can actually accept uh, and bless me with that, with a guru, uh, that uh, we're trying to, I'm trying to ignite guru within other people, but also give them the tools and the psychological, spiritual attainment so they can actually be the best human being they possibly be at the same time as earning capital and money. Um, and then for them to have the inspiration to share it with other people, that's the key. Um, I've written a methodology which is called the Synegus Method and with the Synegus Method, if I can just share uh, just a few moments about it. Synegus basically, the word Sinner is a, a joining of two separates. For example, two ones may become two or they become, when they become two, it's not no longer two ones, it's the number two. So it's something completely different. And Gus is an ancient word for, for God or for the maker, creator. So the principle understanding is Synegus is for when a person joins with their spiritual 
uh, entity, they become a new version of themselves. Does that make sense? So the Synergus method itself is something that we deliver across the globe. I have uh, students around the globe, we have 830 uh, live active students now and on top of that we also have uh, trained thousands of people around the planet who have gone through the processes um, so we I look specifically to ignite other people to share that method and learning and journey with other people um, helping them to get through things like anxieties depressions uh, you could say things like uh, focus getting past procrastinations you know wanting to do something but putting it off again and again which is a pandemic now these days uh, because of our social media interface and our habitual logic of multitasking and, and things of that sort of nature so um, on, on the TED platform I've shared with Mahdi the Kidba I've been blessed uh, with over 160, 170,000 views, I think it is, yeah. Need 200,000 views already, wow, wow, he could. Um, and all I know is that it's changing people's worlds. So, so the intention for us is basically to create a complete Sampuran human being, which is a complete human being. Uh, somebody who can do as they wish and has the inner, uh, what we would call, confidence to be able to take any action that they wish to in the right vein. Gee, wow, that's absolutely amazing. Now, of course, it's incredible to hear that most people think of businessmen to think about the only after the, mo the money. But it's amazing to hear firsthand that um, you base your business, you base your whole mentoring, all, you, all these projects that you work on all around Guru's Bani and Nirmal's Hukum. And that's how it should be. We should be revolving ourselves around the one light. And that's, you know, it's inspiring, you know, being a, a youngster myself. And I'm sure all the youngsters watching as well, they must be feeling inspired as well. And talking about, you know, the young generation. Of course, there's no doubt that, that we know that you're a multimillionaire, and of course, like you mentioned, like we mentioned earlier, you hit the achievement of becoming a millionaire at the age of 21 and a multimillionaire at the age of about 24, 25. What we want to know is, what, what number one tip or advice would you give to young aspiring, uh, aspiring youngsters or entrepreneurs who are watching? Wow, it's really simple. Yeah. Get, clear. Get clear. Get clear on who you are as a human being, as a person, as an individual. When you learn yourself better, that means scientifically, go and do a disc assessment. If you don't know where that is from, come on, come on to the inspireduniversity.com and, and do an assessment. Mm -hmm. Get an assessment. That's the best investment you'd ever make on yourself, yeah. within yourself. So learn yourself in order for you to interact with the world with, on their base as well, so that you can always convert your logic inside. That gives you a true inner ignition of self-confidence and belief so that you know why you do certain things such as if i'm a dominant character why i tend not to listen to other people and what my view on on everything else if i'm an inspirer how i start uh, things but don't necessarily finish them and if i'm stability how i don't want to take large jumps and i want to be looking at stability and is the house okay are the family okay that kind of thing and if i'm a compliant person how i look for the strategy and the structure before i take any action and try to factualize it every one of these worlds every one of them is absolutely correct there is no wrong and there's no right. The Guru says to us that we don't look for fault in anybody else. Basically, learn yourself. Become the inner confident self with humility, with kirpa. And then go and create the change in the worlds of others. If you want to be in business, then go and be in business. Become resilient. Action, action, action. Connect with people who inspire you. You can't have a mentor that doesn't inspire you. I hope some of these thoughts have been helpful to the people who are listening today. And, and if, if they want to reach out to me, is it okay to share yeah, my details? Because absolutely yeah. welcome to come and reach out with me. Um, you'll find that I will respond and I do respond back. Um, and I do try to help as much as I possibly can Indeed. within the time constraints that I have. Um, but please just search me on, on uh, YouTube, Facebook, any of the out there. It's always the same, Suki Wahiwala. And if anybody would like to contact me directly, just literally search for me on WhatsApp and, and just text me directly there or via Messenger. I'm very happy to be communicated and contacted. Um, uh, or go onto the sukiwahiwala.com and there's a little tab straight on there. You can just contact me directly and it'll come straight to me. So I'd, I'd be very humbled. I think the best, best thing that anybody could do is to learn themselves, learn why they do certain things, for what benefits, and then commit to something, get clear on why they want to take an action in a particular way and just be, become resilient towards it. There are going to be ups and downs. Dyson yeah. had uh, a, around 4,000 failures before he turned around and found the right mechanism that worked. Mm -hmm. We go through Stallone. Stallone did over 100 rejections before he carried on. But the resilience, the relentlessness is what I would suggest we need to put in there. And our gorm is full of it. This is what Sikhi is all and truly about. So the gurus have given us the strength 
for ourselves to stand tall, not just for ourselves, not just for our Qom, but for other people who other we need to stand for as well. So I hope, I hope, I would say my message would be is to believe in yourself, you can do it. Reach out to people like ourselves and let's try and see if we can create the change in the world. Absolutely incredible and very inspiring as well. I mean, so as Sasang Ji, you heard it live and direct. Be sure who you are first, learn about yourself, your past, your background, be clear and then be resilient towards your path as well. And most importantly, follow Marge's hukum. I mean, it's an absolute honour to have you on the show. And uh, we hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And uh, Saad Sang Ji, we hope that you guys enjoy the show. As always, if any mistakes have been made, please do forgive <laughs> us. Thank you. If any, any mistakes I've made, but please do respectfully um, give me the blessings of uh, trying to be better next time. Right. So Saad Sang Ji, we hope and wish you guys all a great day. On this, on this note, we will conclude today's episode. Vaigruji Ka Khalsa. Vaigruji Ki Fateh.